Close your eyes, watch your breath. Keep your attention with the breath as continuously as you can. If there are any thoughts that come nibbling away at the edge of your awareness, you don't have to pay them any attention. Just re reinforce your focus. And then think of the stillness spreading out and driving those nibbling thoughts away. You're trying to fight the mind's tendency to go out and look for trouble. And why is it looking for trouble? Because it's hungry. It has a sense of lack inside. So we make up for that sense of lack by providing a sense of well-being with the breath. That way we don't leave ourselves open. Otherwise, greed, aversion, and illusion take over the mind. And part of it can be blamed on the germs of these things outside, things that would give rise to greed, aversion, and delusion. But a lot of it has to do with the mind's own resistance. If it lacks a sense of well-being inside, its resistance is low. It can't help but go looking out for its pleasures and things that look good, sound good, smell good, taste good. And when those things change, then it's upset. This is what we call a diseased mind. The mind that's not diseased is not upset by change, because it has something inside that doesn't change. Now the concentration itself is not quite yet constant, but it's a lot more constant than the things outside. A lot more reliable and a lot more under your control. So in this way you build up your resistance. Because you're not out there ingesting poisonous things. And at the very least, you keep the mind protected. And the deeper you can go inside and find something of even more solid value, the safer you're going to be. But remember the Buddha's definition of a diseased mind. It's one that gets up by, upset by change. And you can't just tell yourself, don't get upset. You have to give the mind something better. And that something better is created by the state of concentration, keeping the mind focused, keeping its focus steady. And that's real health for the mind. As the Buddha said, there is no happiness other than peace. Now there are pleasures out there that are not very peaceful. But whatever hit of pleasure you get in them is the fact that the mind can stay with them for a little bit. The problem is it can't stay very long. Whereas the peace that comes from concentration is a lot longer. Once you've mastered this skill, you've got something you can fall back on at any time. And so the peace of the mind, the health of the mind, the pleasure of the mind, they all come together. In Thai, the word for health, sukha literally means a condition of pleasantness or a condition of ease. And that's the condition you want to maintain in the mind, both for your sense of ease and well-being and also for the health of the mind. Because when it comes right down to it, the health of the body is something that's going to leave you someday, one way or another. We've been getting ironic reports of people dying not from the the virus right now, but from other causes. In other words, if one thing doesn't get you, something else will. But with the mind, it, you don't have to leave the mind in that position. For most people, that's the position they're in. If one thing doesn't get them, something else will. But when the mind is trained, it can resist a lot of those things. The mind can maintain its health, even as the body goes sick, as the body ages. Even as the body dies, a well-trained mind can maintain its well-being. So that's why in your desire for health you should focus most of your attention here. Because right here is where effort put into training the mind will pay off.